With the NBA filled with personalities and players that people love, it's inevitable that there are also those that people just can't stand. Whether it's their on-court antics, off-court behavior, or just their overall demeanor, these players have become lightning rods for controversy and animosity. In this video, we'll delve into who the NBA's most hated player is in 2023, explore why they've earned such a negative reputation, and examine the impact it's having on their career. So, get ready to see some polarizing figures and join us as we take a closer look at the NBA's most hated player in 2023. Over the years, the NBA has had its fair share of bad guys. In the 1990s, Dennis Rodman was the antagonist, followed by Ron Artest in the 2000s, and then, I suppose, Lance Stephenson in the 2010s. But regardless of whether Adam Silver's appointment as a commissioner or the passing of time had a role, the NBA has become a little friendlier. Everyone grew to be the best of friends, and after games, they would embrace instead of yelling and getting in each other's faces. But recently, one Memphis Grizzlies player has decided to travel back in time and relive some of the good old days. Dylan, the Dynasty Brooks, is that person, and as of right now, he is the NBA player that is most despised. You know, flopping is the one thing that may make a player unpopular on the hardwood. Hoopers hate floppers, even though it may be amusing to fans since it's the closest thing to cheating there is. And well, Dylan Brooks just so happens to commit one of the worst basketball blunders ever. You know, during a game against Utah while he was still a member of the Oregon Fighting Ducks in college, one of the most heinous acts I've ever seen on a basketball floor occurred during the second half of the game. Here, we have Brooks guarding his guy just inside the paint, as his number two began moving in the direction of the basket. Then happened a performance worthy of an Oscar. Anyway, just to give you a little history on him, Dylan Brooks was selected in the second round by the Houston Rockets in 2017 before being traded to the Memphis Grizzlies. He scored 19 points in his NBA debut, which is more than any other player who was born in Canada. Later that year, Brooks was allegedly part of a three-team trade involving the Grizzlies, Wizards, and Suns, but the deal fell through due to misunderstandings. The deal fell through because Memphis wanted to trade for Marshawn Brooks rather than Dylan Brooks, who was the player the other clubs wanted. The next season, Brooks only managed to participate in 18 games due to a damaged ligament in his right big toe. The Grizzlies selected Jamarant in the following year's draft. Dylan Brooks averaged 16.1 points and shot 39.9% from three-point range through the first half of that season, which isn't bad. And for the first time in a few seasons, the Grizzlies were in the postseason hunt. They were 25-25 and 25 at the time, good for ninth in the West. And Memphis's front staff decided to sign Brooks to a three-year, $35 million deal right there. Brooks was a renowned rough and gritty defender who could play defense and pose a threat on offense. Brooks began his apprenticeship with Senior 11 Palpatine, also known as Darth Sidious, since it seems that wasn't enough for the guard from Oregon. It was from there that Brooks learned how to pose a psychological threat as well. It began happening at that point. Here's what I mean when I say that he gradually began to rank among the NBA players who were most despised. Mike Conley, who is regarded as one of the nicest players in the NBA, will be our first interviewee. He has received several NBA sportsmanship awards after all. He has been named Teammate of the Year. Additionally, a YouTube search of Conley's 16-year career would turn up no incidents of him getting into a fight with other players. Additionally, before being moved to Utah, he served as Brooks' veteran for two seasons in Memphis. However, Brooks continued to stomp over him, assault him when he was on the ground, and even inflame him during games. Conley, the scholar that he is, only complimented Brooks playing by stating that it is done with passion. But the man after that disagrees. You know, although Donovan Mitchell scored 71 points in a single game this season, Dylan Brooks also sacked Mitchell in the low area. Even though Brooks claims it was an accident, a closer look reveals that he was aware of precisely where he was swinging his arms. And as a result, Brooks was banned for one game and fined exactly $78,621. Goodbye, gentlemen. Dallin Brooks spent more on that one swing than other UFC competitors do on a per-fight basis. Nevertheless, this is what Donovan Mitchell considered it. Sure, that's true. You know, that's just the way he is. It has been spotted. It's a common occurrence. When you are unable to protect or interact with someone, it is difficult. You have to do it, and he has punished many players in this way. I immediately think of people like Dame and Steph, you know. Throughout the years, Brooks and Lillard fought often, but in one specific play, Dane got by him with a little something after he passed him. 
Lillard was enraged by this and turned around to yell. Steph despises Brooks because he blocks him as soon as he has a bucket on him and gets in his face. When Clay Thompson entered the picture during the 2022 playoffs, he came dangerously close to hurting Curry. Brooks said in an ESPN interview that he doesn't like Draymond, doesn't like Golden State, that he wanted to emulate Draymond Green for the sake of his club. He said he wants to play for his club like Draymond Green in the past. For his careless assault on Gray Payton 2 in the 2022 playoffs, Dylan Brooks has drawn criticism. Shannon Sharp and Dub Nation both despise him for it. At a Lakers game in Los Angeles, Brooks also got into a fight with a TV personality and called the former NFL champion a pedestrian. As soon as it was over, he switched into full-on Dennis Rodman mod and even assaulted a cameraman who was only doing his job. If Brooks and Draymond wind up being best buddies in a few years, that would be funny. Basketball is okay for trash-talking players, but doing something like this is low. Anyway, let's go back to NBA players. Dylan Brooks also got into a fight with Anthony Edwards, Joel Embiid, James Harden, and Nikola Jokic. I think Kyrie Irving's abuse of him was the funniest way for him to be hated. You see, before their clash in a game when Luka wasn't going to participate due to injury, Brooks had some choice comments for Kyrie. I hope Luka gets back for the next game so I can guard him, Brooks remarked. It only goes to demonstrate that they aren't always ready to return to a physical game. Then he said, now that I can get Irving by myself today, I want to see what he's all about, in response to that. I can't wait to pick him up every time full and watch him become worn out since he had a few words for me in Brooklyn. Although they lost against Kyrie and the Mavericks, the Grizzlies were planning to switch jerseys after the game. At least, that's what Brooks believed. However, I don't know what transpired. Dylan Brooks then receives Kyrie's jersey. They shake hands and Kyrie just walks away, leaving Dylan Brooks hanging there on national television. Undoubtedly, it is among the most humiliating things that may occur to a player. Anyway, Tylen Dynasty Brooks has gotten into a fight with like half the All-Star squad in the last year or two. And what about that? The Dynasty has just recently started. And he is still in his prime, therefore he is not done yet. Who's next on his list, I wonder? Terry Young? SGA? Perhaps Giannis? The trash talking is a good thing actually in all of that, and I genuinely believe that it makes watching the NBA much more enjoyable. Even though I don't believe he's inherently awful, Kyrie's statement that there has been a lot going on with him was the finest one in my opinion. Seeing him amid all the Draymond drama is fantastic for our league, but at the same time, we need to act with maturity. Nothing should cross the line into the personal. I believe that everyone has more fun if we keep it entirely on the floor. However, once it becomes personal, you know what happens to it in the public eye. But now, we want to hear from you. Do you agree with our pick for the most hated player, or do you have someone else in mind? Why do you think this player has earned such a negative reputation? Share your thoughts and opinions in the comments below, and don't forget to like and subscribe for more sports content. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.